So we have an important update in the Bianchi Maryland assault weapon ban case, which is now up for Supreme Court review and is currently seeking immediate intervention from the Supreme Court. So let's talk about what is happening. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think assault weapon bans are clearly unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also wanna thank one of the main sponsors and supporters of this channel, which is Blackout Coffee. Blackout Coffee makes amazing coffee and they're huge Second Amendment supporters. They have dedicated roasts for organizations like FPC, GOA, and SAF. So if you wanna get amazing coffee and support the 2A cause, check out Blackout Coffee. And if you use the code ARMSCHOLAR, you can get 10% off of your order. As I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna be talking about the critical rifle ban case that is now up for Supreme Court immediate review. You may recall that the Second Amendment Foundation recently filed for a writ of cert before judgment, and that went to the United States Supreme Court. What they're challenging here is Maryland's ban on so-called assault weapons. And this case is called Bianchi versus Brown. This now sets the stage for a critical Supreme Court review of a state rifle ban that can, of course, have broad reaching implications for a bunch of states like California, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, all these states that have passed rifle bans. And this all comes on the heels of the Fourth Circuit recently playing a ton of games and taking the Bianchi case out of the hands of the lower court after the case sat almost for 13 months. The Fourth Circuit en banc panel did this to avoid any positive ruling in the case, but now that decision has potentially backfired on the Fourth Circuit because SAF has decided to not wait for the Fourth Circuit en banc panel to rule in this case, and instead they have filed for a writ assert before judgment. However, the state of Maryland has now responded. They've filed their response for why the Supreme Court should not intervene in this case early and why they shouldn't address this issue of rifle bans. The arguments made by the state of Maryland are actually very interesting, including arguments that the recent Supreme Court decision in Bruin has no impact on this Maryland ban at all. This case, Bianchi, was challenged and filed in a Maryland federal district court. In this complaint, essentially the plaintiffs here had to concede that the Second Amendment claim was foreclosed at the district court level, mainly because of a prior Fourth Circuit decision on this very issue in a prior case called Colby. In that prior case, Colby, the district court upheld this Maryland ban using something known as intermediate scrutiny. And on review, a divided panel in the Fourth Circuit, a three-judge panel, ultimately found that this Maryland ban did in fact violate the Second Amendment. However, the Fourth Circuit en banc panel was not going to let that decision sit, so they took review of that Colby case. On review, the Fourth Circuit en banc panel upheld the state of Maryland's ban, and they found that these rifles are outside the protection of the Second Amendment. And they said they're outside the protection of the Second Amendment because they are useful in military service. So that case, Colby, currently stands in some ways as precedent in the Fourth Circuit. This case, Bianchi had to concede that Colby was the controlling precedent but that it was simply incorrect and should be reversed. The district court in the case Bianchi ultimately dismissed the entire case, dismissed the complaint for a failure to state a claim, primarily because of that prior Colby case. Well, then ultimately what ended up happening is the plaintiffs decided to file an appeal up to the Fourth Circuit, but the Fourth Circuit once again said, hey, we have to dismiss this case because of the Colby precedent. But then this case made its way up to Supreme Court for the first time back in 2022 and the plaintiffs were seeking a review and reversal of the Colby decision. Well, ultimately what ended up happening is the Supreme Court did rule in a different case, a landmark Second Amendment case called New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin. And they found among many things, the correct way to review Second Amendment cases is to look at the text of the Second Amendment in light of relevant history and tradition. The relevant history is that history during 1791, or at least traces back to 1791. If the government cannot prove that the restriction is constitutional with relevant history, well, then it needs to be struck down. Also keep in mind, we have the Heller precedent that sits, which talks about common use for lawful purposes of certain firearms and that they cannot be outright banned. And that's exactly what Maryland is doing. Now, after issuing that ruling, the Supreme Court did issue a GVR in this Bianchi case. That means that the Supreme Court granted a review to this case, vacated the lower court judgment, and then send the case back down to the Fourth Circuit for reconsideration in light of their Bruin decision. This case was then opened back up in the Fourth Circuit and the court there held oral arguments in front of a three judge panel, but that was back in December of 2022. And then this case sat for 13 months with absolutely nothing going on. And there was a lot of you know concern about what was going on. And then we received an order from the Fourth Circuit en banc panel that they were going to take the case out of the hands of the three judge panel and review it on their own. But again, that was after the case sat for 13 months. 
And the likelihood was that the Fourth Circuit en banc panel did this to avoid any positive decision. And that's also probably why this case sat for so long. And just a couple of weeks ago, the Fourth Circuit en banc panel did hold oral arguments in this case. And those oral arguments showed how the en banc panel is still very much committed to not following the Second Amendment, not following what it says, not following the text of the Second Amendment. And also they're not interested in following what the Supreme Court has said and outlined in Heller or Bruin. But the good news is that instead of waiting for the Fourth Circuit en banc panel to review and decide this case and maybe sit on it for even longer, the awesome team over at the Second Amendment Foundation has now submitted a petition for Supreme Court writ assert before judgment. This is a completely different mechanism for early Supreme Court review. This essentially is a way to bypass the hearings and rulings of lower courts and instead go directly to the Supreme Court for an actual ruling on the merits. But in the state of Maryland's new response brief, they argue that not only do they think Bruin does not change the outcome of this Maryland ban at all, but also that this issue is too premature for the Supreme Court intervention at this time. In their brief, Maryland argues that although Bruin rejects the tiers of scrutiny framework that many courts of appeals had applied, the court left intact its pronouncement in Heller that M16 rifles and the like are weapons that may be banned. Nonetheless, in the wake of Bruin, this court vacated the Fourth Circuit's decision in this case and remanded it for reconsideration in light of Bruin. Now less than two years after Bruin, petitioners want this court to consider the constitutionality of Maryland's assault weapon ban. They point to no split among the circuits regarding assault weapon bans, though nor can they credibly argue that the Fourth Circuit's Colby decision conflicts with any decision of this court, whose unambiguous statement in Heller regarding weapons that are most useful in military service, M16 rifles and the like, remain undisturbed. One of the main arguments that is being made by Maryland in their opposition is that the unfortunate dicta language in that Heller decision about M16s and the like, uh, essentially what Maryland is arguing is that means that they can outright ban all semi-automatic rifles and that would be constitutional. They argue that the subsequent decision in Bruin and the remand of the Supreme Court in this case for reconsideration pretty much means very little. Maryland argues that the remand in light of Bruin is isolated only to the fact that the tier-based scrutiny was rejected by the Supreme Court in that Bruin case, but they argue Bruin did not reject the M16 rifle bans or these types of comprehensive bans, and then they reference to Heller to support this type of restriction. Therefore, Maryland believes that their ban is still constitutional even after Bruin. They also seem to believe that no historical analysis is needed at all and doesn't need to be performed by the state to justify this type of restriction. And they claim that pretty much Heller's reference to M16 bans and that type of ban potentially being lawful, they believe it's pretty much a blank check for them to justify any type of ban that they want to put in place like this one here. They also go on to argue that Still, even if this court were otherwise inclined to assess the continuing vitality of the statement after Bruin or to consider the application of Bruin to assault weapon bans, this petition is doubly premature. First, there are no circumstances that would justify the extraordinary step of granting a writ of cert before judgment, particularly where the en banc Fourth Circuit heard oral argument just last month. Second, the application of Bruin to assault weapon bans is a question that has scarcely begun to percolate in the courts of appeals. So here, Maryland is making the common argument that the Supreme Court should not intervene in this case at this time because the case is still being decided on the merits in front of the Fourth Circuit en banc panel. They're saying that the Supreme Court here should simply just wait for the lower court to decide this issue and not step in early. Then Maryland argues that there have not been enough decisions yet by various courts in the US about how Bruin applies to rifle bans. They argue that most of the decisions on Bruin's application have primarily been only in a preliminary injunction stage and that no higher courts have used Bruin yet to strike down these types of bans. Now, what is very funny and interesting about this argument is the fact that most of these lower courts, most of these circuit courts, have not issued decisions simply because they're doing a bunch of stall tactics, They're just similar to what the Fourth Circuit did with this Bianchi case. They're sitting on all these cases or playing games like we saw the Ninth Circuit do in the Duncan Magsie ban case. And it's this two-year delay in gamemanship by the lower courts like the Fourth Circuit that has now forced you know, organizations like SAF to have to seek a writ of cert before judgment to the Supreme Court. The fact that not a single higher court will actually address this issue after Bruin means that it's finally time for the Supreme Court to step in now.
So this is really interesting. And if anything else develops, if anything else changes, I will let you guys know. So if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by Barm Scholars and this nation will be maintained by Barm Scholars.